Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to show you guys how to build like a little basic messaging app in JavaScript. Now, this isn't going to be like a full-fledged messaging app, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to be able to type some text inside of this text box over here. We'll be able to click the send button and then that text will show up on the screen. And so I can keep posting text like little text messages and then they'll just keep appearing on the screen. It's gonna be kind of cool and it'll kind of give you an idea of how you can do something like this in JavaScript. So I wanna point out to you guys just my HTML really quick. I have an unordered list and it has an ID of messages. And inside of this unordered list, we're actually going to put all of our messages. So each message is gonna be like a list item and we'll end up putting all of them inside of this unordered list. I also have this input text box right here. And that's just that text box that you guys saw. It has an ID of text box. And then I have this button, this send button, it just has an ID of button. So like I said, when we click this send button, generally what's gonna happen is a new message will show up inside of this unordered list. So let's head over to our JavaScript and we can start programming this. The first thing I wanna do is create variables for each one of these items. So I wanna create a variable for this text box, one for this button, and then one for that unordered list. So I'm just gonna create three variables and we'll just say var messages is equal to document.get element by ID. And inside of here, we'll just pass in that messages. And then I'm just gonna copy this and do the same for the text box. And we'll do the same for the button. So I now have three variables, each of which is grabbing the element on the screen, right? So we're grabbing the messages list, the text box and the button. So the first thing I wanna do is create an event listener for this button. In other words, I wanna be able to execute some JavaScript code when this button gets clicked. So we can come down here and we can say button.add event listener. And we'll be able to pass into this event add event listener function two parameters. The first is the actual event that we want to watch for. So I can say click. And the next thing I wanna pass in is a function that's gonna get executed when the button gets clicked. And so the easiest thing for us to do would be just to define the function right here. So I can do something like this. So I'm creating this function. And now I'll just make a new line. And in here, we can just write out all the code that we want to get executed when we press the button. So let's think this through. How can we make it so when the button gets clicked, the message shows up in that unordered list? Well, the first thing we can actually do is create a new element. And so one of the things we'll need to do is create a list item that we can put inside of that unordered list. And creating an element is actually not that difficult. There's a JavaScript command that we can use in order to do that. So I'm actually gonna create a new variable and we'll store that element inside of a variable. So I'll say var new message is equal to, and now all I have to say to create a new element is say document dot create element. And inside of here, we just wanna pass the name of the element that we wanna create. So in our case, we're creating a list item. So the name is just li. And that's how we can create a basic element. But now what we need to do is we need to add into this element the text that was inside of that text box, right? In other words, I want the text inside of this list item to be the text that was in the text box. So I can say new message dot inner HTML is equal to, and now what I wanna do is grab the text that's inside of that text box. So what we can say is text box, and this is referring to that text box variable that we created up here. Remember, text box is just that text box that's on the screen. And in order to get the text inside of it, we can access the value attribute. So text box dot value is all the text that's inside of that text box. And so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just setting the inner HTML of the list item equal to the value that was inside of that text box, right? Makes sense. So now what I wanna do is 
I want to add this list item inside of that unordered list. In other words, I want to put the list item in that list so it has a new item. So I can use a JavaScript function called append child. And what we want to do is access that messages unordered list. So I can say messages dot append child. And we just put in the new element that we want to append into this unordered list. In our case, it's just new message. So assuming all of this works, I can come over here, refresh my page. And if I type something in here and I click the send button, it'll show up up here in that unordered list. So I can, you know, type whatever I want into here and basically everything is going to be fine. Here's the one thing though, that we could improve, right? When I click send the text inside of this text box stays the same. Generally in a texting app, when you click send, the text inside of here will disappear. So if we want to do that, all we have to do is come down here, add a new line, and we can just say text box dot value is equal to the empty string. So now the text box value will be empty whenever we enter in text. So under in text, click send, and then you can see that the text disappears inside of the text box. So this is a really basic example. And you know, obviously like it's functional, I can keep typing in whatever I want, and it's going to show up on the page. So for our purposes, we built like a mini texting app, obviously, you can't really text with other people. But you know, this kind of shows you like functionally how you can type something into a text box, click a button and get it to show up on the page. So I just want to recap real quick for you guys what I actually did here. So over here in my index.html file, I have these three elements, this unordered list with the ID of messages, the input with text box and the button with the ID of button. Over here in my JavaScript, I created three variables. So I created a messages variable. And this was basically just storing the HTML element, uh, that unordered list. I created the text box variable, which was storing the text box. And I created the button, which was storing the button. Then I took that button and I added an event listener onto it. And I was basically waiting for someone to click the button, right? And when they click the button, I executed this function over here. So this function is all of this code down here. And inside of this function, we created a new variable called new message. And basically what I did was I set that equal to, I, to a new element on the page. So I created a new HTML element on our page and it was just a list item. And then I added text into that element. So inside of the list item, I put the value that was inside the text box. And then I appended that list item onto the messages unordered list, right? And then I set the text value equal to blank. So all of that code, and it really wasn't too much code when you think about it, allowed us to have this functional little chatting app. But you'll notice when I refresh the page, everything disappears. And the more we learn about JavaScript, the more we'll learn about how to store those values. So when we refresh the page, they don't disappear. And the more you learn about web development, you'll learn how you can actually like store all of those little messages inside of something like a database and, you know, really make a fully functional app. But for now, that kind of shows you how you can do everything on the front end and create something functional like that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.